Hello, and welcome to another in the Appeal Democrats ongoing series speaking with candidates in the November 2012 election. Today, we're here with Cash Gill, who's a candidate for the Yuba City City Council. Mr. Gill, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today. Well, let's talk about what is probably going to be very much on the minds of most everyone in this election season, up and down the ballot, mm -hmm. and that's the economy and jobs. What, as a city council member, would you see as the way to help boosting Yuba City's economy, bringing back some of that economic development? You know, that's a very good question, Ben. The backbone, the small engine that I always called for businesses is small business. Mm -hmm. Small business is the one that creates jobs. And any time you have a small business that's going to hire anywhere from one to five employees, all of a sudden you're beginning to put people you know, back to work. And if you're able to, as a small business, have incentives either from, from taxes, uh, payroll taxes, quarterly taxes, some of that kind of stuff, workman's comp, those are the types of small little issues or small little uh, incentives that's going to bring back businesses to work. I was talking just over the weekend with Sunset Molding. Sunset Molding is a company which is in Live Oak, which is in Sutter County. They had over four or five hundred employees mm -hmm. in this community. And because of the cost uh, and regulations, they were down to 40 employees. Mm -hmm. And John's told me now that the way they've restructured, they're coming back uh, within the next few months, they're going to be hiring 200 employees right here in this community. And my, my question to what, him was, what, what, what changed now that you weren't able to do? He said, we're doing things a lot differently than we were doing before. We've become technology uh, has definitely begun to play a role within computerized versus before they weren't able to do it. So it's those small incentives, those small ideas that's going to fuel this economy. The other thing that we do have in Yuba City is we do have the infrastructure built within the area. We've got properties that are zoned commercial in case that businesses do want to come to relocate in Yuba City we're ready, willing, and able to do, do, do that. Okay. Another issue that's been present for Yuba City and all of Sutter County in the last few years now, really, is mm -hmm. the animal shelter. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's been some differences of opinion among the players in that, including Yuba City, on mm -hmm. how that project should get done. Right. What's your take on that? What would you like to see the city do? Well, it's one of those processes. I was on the ad hoc committee from day number one. I mean, I'm, I'm a strong supporter of animals. We adopted it. My daughter adopted a dog from the animal control shelter. I think eight years to get this project has gone on too long, okay? Uh, however, the number one issue that comes out is cost. At what cost? Every day that we're delaying this, it's costing more and more and more to do it. Right now, uh, the agreement was that the city's going to take over. Prior to the agreement, the city of Yuba City was funding 60% of the cost mm -hmm. for that. The rest of the cost was coming from Sutter County and Live Oak. And one of the things that Yuba City was saying is, if we're going to pay 60% of this cost for this animal control shelter, then we should have 60% say so mm -hmm. into the decisions that's coming back on. The agreement now is the city of Yuba City to take it on. And, and the hang up right now is, yes, we're going to take it on, the city's going to take it on, but is the decision of the employees. Do the employees come with the transfer of the agreement or the, do, do the employees get reallocated somewhere else? And that's the hang-up. And I strongly believe it's going to get resolved. It's going to get built. And I just wish that we would have had this thing done sooner than eight years to get this thing completed. Uh, as you're aware, there is actually an opening on the city council right now after uh, Councilmember McBride was appointed to the state uh, agency. Mm -hmm. Uh, they chose a process to fill that position through appointment. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that decision and what sort of qualities, if you end up on the city council and you're one of the people overseeing that appointment, you want to see from someone else who'd be on the council? Yeah, there, there's two, two things that happen is uh, the process at the last council meeting, the city council members excluded all of the people that are running for the council race right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, This appointment is going to be... Uh, has a formal process, they'll do the interviews, and I believe right around October 15th, October 20th, they'll make their selection, okay? The swearing-in ceremony for this person or this individual will be sworn in on November 6th. Mm. So whomever is selected from this council will not have any say-so into who's appointed. Okay. So that process will be completed before uh, this election is pretty much done. Okay. Yeah. 
lastly, uh, you were on the council before. Mm -hmm. Didn't win re-election, but you're back at it again this time. Mm -hmm. What do you think, what's your message to voters on why they should put you back on there? Well, you know, here's the thing. I was on the city council for four years. And I think if you go back and take a look in the four years, what was accomplished, okay? What issues were ahead of us? The biggest issue that was facing us was public safety. Public safety for police, fire, and flood protection, okay? Within that four year period, we were able to build the consensus with Yuba City, uh, Live Oak, Sutter County, Biggs and Gridley, and we were able to pass a bond measure to fix our levies, mm -hmm. okay? Had we not done that, had we were not able to pass this bond measure as a community, all of us living in the entire region there that was gonna be affected would be paying $1,500 per parcel per year on an ongoing basis without any end in sight. That would have been $30 million that would be leaving our community forever. Mm -hmm. Because we were able to work with Department of Water Resources, the Army Corps of Engineers, we were able to qualify for what we call early implementation program to get these levies fixed. In 2013, the beginning of 2014, the work will begin on these levies. So far, FEMA has decided not to map the city of Yuba City, the county of Sutter, into a flood zone area. Mm. So therefore, our rates are pretty much where we are. That was accomplishment number one. Accomplishment number two is we're taking a look at gangs and gang activities. We were able to add uh, officers to a special gang task force unit, okay, which constantly work and identify and work with the other jurisdictions in keeping gangs suppressed within this community. The other fourth, third, number three that we did is we did some traffic congestion coming out of the area. Uh, Winco Road, four lanes, uh, Lincoln Road part of it, two lanes into four lanes, Walton Road, uh, widening that into four lanes, just some smaller things that mount to a lot of, of bigger things that we were able to do. Times were tough, times are gonna get tougher. We were able to balance the budget without raising any taxes. When times were good, we were able to set up a economic stabilization fund mm -hmm. where money was gone into there. We kept 10% in reserves. So we're, 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 we're set where the city, even though it's gonna have some tough times, we have sufficient reserves to go through our tough times. But now in the next two year, contracts are gonna be up for negotiations with police, fire, all city employees. It's gonna be some very tough decisions uh, that are gonna lie in the city. And I feel that I'm capable of making those tough decisions as I've done in the past. I'm qualified, I live in this community, I work in this community, uh, my children go to school here. Uh, this, is, this is what I call home. And I wanna make this even better than when I was on the council, so for generations to come. I've enjoyed my time as a public servant, and I would be honored and humbled to have the votes uh, of all the citizens of the city of Yuba City. Okay, all right. Mr. Gill, appreciate your time. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. Thank you. And we will be speaking with other candidates for the Yuba City City Council, as well as other local races of interest in our continuing effort to provide voters with information before the November 6th general election.